Hello viewers, Super GT here. Now it's been a very long time since I've done league racing on any racing game. Finally, I have returned. And this is the Club 100 Esports Championship. Now, for those of you who've seen some of the kart racing videos I do, um, Club 100 is a series that I race in real life. I want to do my kart racing. And this series was set up by one of the test drivers, uh, Sam Dimelo, in that series. Uh, so it'd be interesting here to race some of the people I race in real life in the virtual world instead. Um, so I think this is going to be a really fun championship. It's going to be a really good set of races. It goes over four weeks, uh, so four rounds. What we're seeing in this round is, uh, what we're seeing in this video, sorry, is round one. And in each round, so today you're going to see two races. Um, what we're looking at here first off is uh, qualifying. So a 10 minute qualifying session before race one. And uh, let me go quickly through the, the format so I can sort of introduce it all to you. Um, so, uh, yeah, four rounds. Uh, each round has two races. The first race is a group four race of 20 minutes in length. And uh, that's always going to be in the group four Aston Martin Vantage, as you can see here that we're using. Uh, so the 10 minute qualifying session, then it'll be a 20 minute race. Then race two will be a group three race around, uh, well, different tracks. Uh, half an hour long and you can choose any group 3 car for that uh, so two races you'll see today in this video and let me tell you the racing was really good really really good and it makes me think oh, I should have gone back to league racing like a lot sooner because when you when you join these leagues you can really get some good proper racing because everyone's there for the right reasons you know and um, that definitely proved to be the case for these races it was really really good really good fun uh, so this is a qualifying lap. You see here in the toe of Trevisio just ahead, and we go pole position 11.4 at this point in time. Still seven minutes left though in this qualifying session. So by this point, actually down to fourth place, uh, just trying to seek a faster lap. It was very important to get that toe on the end of the lap, or at the start, but preferably at the end. Uh, that toe, I would say, is worth at least four tenths of a second. And that is massive in a qualifying session. Through the first split, you see there, half a tenth up. Now, I'm not quite close enough to get the toe here, but if I can just nail these corners on the infield, then I might be able to get into the toe onto the back straight. We are, of course, at uh, Hash Brown Raceway, although it's taken a rather sizable chunk out of the Hash Brown, and uh, therefore we are at Hash Brown Infield A. Okay, one more corner left. This final corner is crucial, but very difficult to nail. And you have to get really comfy with that wall. And I think we are just into the toe. And let's see how this affects us. I didn't really gain too much, but we do go quicker. Up into third place, two tenths away from pole position. I tried once more, and I pushed a little bit too hard. I didn't have the toe anyway. And we completely bottled it. But here we go then, race number one of the season, starting third on the grid. Not too bad, fairly happy with that. Group four, not my strength, I prefer the group three races. But group four, gonna have to try and improve my skill. In the yellow car here, so there's uh, 14 players, uh, seven teams of two, I'm in the yellow team. We're doing it in an individual championship as well. So let's worry about the start now, as we go away from the grid. Marky Will was a very poor getaway actually and dropping from second down to third. Uh, so now, moving up into second, we can try to attack early. Now the main consideration I'm thinking of here is the toe. As soon as you've lost the toe, you, um, you do lose a lot of time. It's really important that we try and stay with uh, Nathan here in the lead, the pole sitter of the race. He's gone very wide there. And uh, that's typically what you see on lap one when the tires are I was going to say minus 273, but we're not quite JD uh, limitless. The tires aren't quite that cold here. Maybe t minus 200. Uh, but by this point, at the end of lap number one, cooling, or sorry, increasing their temperature, so that we actually have some grip. It's the first couple of corners we don't have much grip. So race, uh, sorry, lap number one here, getting away rather well. From first, uh, sorry, from third up into second on the back of first. Good exit there through the final corner fully into the slipstream here onto the main straight very long straight here at infield uh, a of blue moon but it does go into a rather 
Uh, well, it's, it's an awkward corner, the first corner here at Blue Moon. Across the line we go then, neck and neck, we actually go into the lead here. On the outside though, let's see if we can convert this into an overtake. And this first corner really lends itself to overtaking, either on the way in or the way out, as we can see here. Getting the cut back up the inside into turn number two, pretty much fully alongside. He goes round the long way, is he going to be able to keep that? Not quite, it looks like he got a bit of oversteer there, mid corner. And just surrenders the lead up into first place then. Well, that's a good lap and a half opening of this race. But there's a very long way to go. 20 minutes in length these races are. So you do have to keep your wits about you. It's about the length of daily race C, roughly. A little bit wide there through the hairpin. And um, the Aston Martin in group four. I would say it's, it's quite tricky to get this thing to rotate, especially for the tight corners. Getting a good exit for that, uh, there, through the final corner, onto the main straight once again. A couple of cars very close behind. Uh, the pack beginning to spread apart. I'm going to go to the left-hand side here and defend. And I hope that we can protect the lead for another 17 and a half minutes. It's going to take a fair amount of time. Now, I wasn't sure where the track limit was there, so he went to the left. I thought I was fully on the left of the track, but I guess you can go down to the apron. So he goes back into the lead. And we've just got to make sure we stay into the toe here and don't get dropped. That is a consideration number one. Of course, the magical three quarters of a second distance range, if you like. We need to stay within that and this guy won't get away from us. We do have the close attentions of Marky Boy, very, very close behind. He started second now just beginning to recover uh, so it's a very accomplished uh, drivers here Mikey boy is in fact a uh, DT Academy finalist if I get that correct I'm pretty sure he is I'm a little bit wide there and that means he's going to be on our left hand side here coming into the final corner is he gonna back up yes he is you see that on the radar bottom right of the screen but you see all of that fighting and all that mistake making by myself means that Nathan in the lead just drops us and he gets more than out of the slipstream range and that is not good news early in this race Nathan was very quick in qualifying they seem to be setting very much the best times over and over we've got Roswald here just behind as well so it's a very close and intense battle here for second place as uh, Mark goes through into second and we're going to have to sit into third so okay lap one and two were good moving from third to first and <laughs> The laps since have been not as good, moving from first to third, but um, still plenty of time left in this one. 15 or well, nearly 16 minutes left remaining. You need to be patient, just try and set nice, consistent laps and make sure we don't do anything silly. Don't get a silly penalty or don't do a silly mistake. Don't get sent to the Shadow Realm. You name it. We'll try and uh, get to this, get to the end of this one in a nice tidy fashion and now of course it is a championship as well so the thing you have to think about here yes you do want to try and win the race you, you want to do the best you can in every race but you also have to have the consideration of consistency you, know, you don't want to get to the end of the championship and think oh man if I'd only finished that race without crashing then uh, I would have been in a bit of better position but here I'm going to try and play the long game so Marky Boy goes defensive but I was happy to the bump draft and try to catch back up and work together uh, to catch up to Nathan in the lead and I'm not sure that that message was really registering at this point uh, so the next lap round we tried the same thing again he was going to go defensive but I was just more than willing to bump draft and work together uh, so Nathan he seemed to have a tenth or two in, in his pocket he, he was just that little bit quicker in the lead it was very difficult to catch up with him uh, but by the third time here, I thought, okay, I'm going to try and go for this myself and move up into second and try to catch him up. Now, it's a really difficult track to really maximise the car around here. Uh, the infield is very, very tricky. Th these corners here, very, very technical. It's on the power. This, this right hander coming up, uh, you really have to cut it, but it's very, very hard to get on the power exactly at the right moment without going onto the grass. So many people drifting onto that grass. It's so easy to do. Uh, Marky Boy actually dropping down to fourth now. This hasn't been a good lap for him, dropping from second to fourth. Uh, the gap here about 1.7 to the lead, so I need to gain about a second to get back into that slipstream range, and uh, that'd be very tricky to do. 
Uh, but we, we will give it our best shot. That is all we can do. You can't ask for more than that. Through the final corner. I mean, this technically is the final corner here, but it's flat out on an oval. Uh, so it's not really a corner. You don't even have to do anything on it. Uh, so Roswald actually has a penalty. Uh, in this series, of course, let's not forget, this is a private lobby. So there's no penalty zones, which you normally get in the daily races. Uh, so Marky Boy there, you see him in third. He drops down to fourth, then fifth and then sixth and then I think further so some sort of error some sort of mistake some sort of collision not sure but he's dropped down and so that is someone who has the potential to be easily on the podium who is well out of range now so that's one less person to worry about and this is the thing we're talking about with the consistency of the races throughout a championship you need to make sure you're not doing that making those mistakes and dropping back into the pack and finishing eighth when he should have been finishing third or something. But uh, by this lap here, Roswell was out of our solution range, but then he just got into it. I just did not get a good exit onto the straight, just clipping the barrier and it lost crucial momentum. So now we've definitely got a battle on our hands for this second place. I thought I was home and dry. I thought I was away. But um, at this point, uh, Nathan in the lead, he's more than home and dry, I would say. But it's, it's, it's very much a battle here for second with just under seven minutes left to go at this point as we cross the line to begin lap number 12. I'm going to go defensive, cover the inside, force him to the right and uh, there is the danger here of the cutback which is very easy to do around this long first corner. If you can't overtake on the way in, you can cut back, overtake on the way out and get the inside line for this next left-hander here. That hasn't happened on this lap but it's definitely something we have to watch out for in future laps. So through the right hander, cutting that one and right on the limit of the curb. Very close behind. This hairpin coming up is a viable overtaking opportunity, breaking on the beginning of that shadow and then using the first gear there to rotate the car. And as we progress onto lap 13, again he's very, very close. I'm going to defend to the left hand side once more as we head in. And you just have to make sure you don't overshoot the corner, taking it in fact a little bit too narrow. And on the exit, we are just about okay. And he's right on us. Perhaps just not quite close enough to go for that move. But that move surely is coming at some point soon. Because he is right on our tail. He's pressing for this second position. And this is basically a little scenario we have for ourselves now. I just have to finish second. That's the best I can do. I'm not going to win this race now. Unless Nathan and Lee does something absolutely spectacularly stupid. But... Um, He's looking nice and composed. It's a battle for second for sure at this point in time. We have a nice little margin to the driver in fourth at the moment. So we can afford here to fight a little bit with now just under five minutes to go in this race. Through the final corner, he gets a really good run there, does uh, Roswald. Uh, Ryan, real name. We're going to get into the toe. You see here how much of an effect it has. But I did not get enough of an exit out of the final corner. So I wasn't close enough going on to the straight. It took too long to get into the slipstream and the toe. So here, just looking up the inside, I'm going to put my nose up the inside and just make him aware. And he, I think he was too aware of, of where I was. And he gave me space when he didn't have to because I backed out. And uh, sort of an unforced error there, really. Well, I kind of half-forced that error, you could say. But I was still surprised that it was made. Uh, over the line to begin lap number 15, the battle is still going on. Still going strong. Into the first corner then. Once again, just try to make sure we don't over overshoot it and we've hit the apex, we've hit the curb. But he has got a better exit. He's going to go to the left-hand side here. Is he going to commit to the move? No, he backs out and lives to fight another day. Next lap then, beginning of lap number 16. He does go full send up the inside this time. A nice, brave move. Didn't quite get on the power early enough to get back to the cut back. And uh, I'm going to have to settle into third here. 1 minute 40 remaining. So I would presume that this lap is the penultimate lap and the next one will be the final lap. Okay, closing up into the toe. Is he going to defend it? Yes, he is. Moves to slide to the right-hand side. Break on the shadow. Make sure we don't um, miss our breaking point under the bridge. i are going to go for the cutback. Just try and force him out of position somehow on the right-hand side. So he's going to go in fairly narrow here into the hairpin. And we're going to have to get a good exit onto the back straight. This is the last time we're going to go down the main straight with the full entirety of the straight. Therefore we need to make sure that this one counts because this is going to be the final of big overtaking opportunity on the lap 
on the race. I'm just going to move to the left hand side. As we enter turn one, we've both gone in side by side actually. He's going to try and hang this one around the outside. And powering out towards turn two, this is very close racing between the two of us. We can't really be separated. And again, he's made the same mistake, just drifted too wide, thinking that I was there, but I backed out by that point. So another error, the same error, and usually you should try and learn from the first one. But fortunately for me, that is not the case. And I move up into second with half a lap left to go. With Roswald here running out of opportunities to go for this return move as we enter the very end of race number one. It's been a really good race, really close battling. Would I, could I have won it? Possibly, but Nathan was very, very fast in this one. He's very, very fast in these cars. So it was always going to be difficult. But uh, bringing home a second, not too bad. We started third, let's not forget. So it's always good to move forward from where you start. And then onto the main straight for the final time. I don't think he's going to be close enough to go uh, to get the toe and go back past us. But we are going to finish in second. It was a really good fight. Really enjoyable battle that. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you did too. But that is only race one. There's still another race after this. And there's still three more weeks of this as well afterwards to come. So plenty more. If you're not subbed, make sure you make sure you get yourself subbed. Okay, here's my group three car. I have gone for Lexus. You have to choose the same Group 3 car for the whole season. I've gone for Lexus. I even did the paint job myself. Um, I spent some rare time in in uh, the livery creator. So here's the race. I'm just kidding. This is not the race. This is just messing about in the pre-lobby. Right, yeah. So that's not the race. This is the race. And you can see there the, the nice different colours of the cars in the different teams. So red team actually on, on uh, locking up the front row for this one. Well because they finished last in the first race. Let's not forget, this is a reverse grid race. So courtesy of finishing second, we start second to last in this one. Uh, 30 minutes, group three, Nürburgring GP. The lights are out. Let's begin. Let's see how this one goes. Jay there with a very slow getaway. And again, one position, so started 13th. And Nürburgring, turn one. Usually this would be absolute carnage, Shadow Realm Portal. And, well, this is what happens in league racing. You get respect. Respect actually gets shown. And people know how to race. It's good to see. And um, coming through in 11th here. So the two McLarens ahead. And I think there's a bit of contact between the two of them. This one gets sent very wide. That's Mark, actually. And uh, we're going to go up the inside here. Up into 10th place. Good battling between the Aston Martin and the McLaren. McLaren on our right-hand side now at this point in time. Towards turn number 5. Looking for this move on the Aston Martin, not quite close enough to make it happen. But then uh, McLaren on our right hand side here, a bit of contact through the corner. That's going to send us slightly wide. But we're up into ninth place. I'm just going to have to try to slip across here in front of Marky Boy in the McLaren. Try to close off that potential move here into the hairpin at the bottom of the hill. Lap number one. So started 13th, up into ninth. We've gained four already. That is a fairly solid return. Now I've gone for Lexus because. I feel like Lexus is a very good all-round car. You do have to worry about tyre wear in these races. Five times tyre tire wear, which is pretty high. Look out the inside into turn 10. And I hit my brake marker. I think the Aston Martin actually went a little bit too deep. And eventually had to succumb. Lose the position. So now up into 8th. That's a good return so far. Gaining 5. Uh, so yeah, with 5 times tyre wear, that is pretty high. Um, the strategy... There is going to be strategy in this race, so we do have to do pit stops. Well, you, you don't have to. You can do the whole race without pitting if you want. But according to my race simulation practice that I did, uh, a one or a two stop is actually fairly close, but I think two stop is typically the safer method. And uh, I think that's what we're going to go for. So a half an hour race. And um, you see there the pack beginning to fan out slightly at the end of lap number one, beginning of lap number two. And, oh, actually, the Mercedes there drifting slightly wide. There might have been contact. Couldn't quite see. But he's in the gravel now. And we're going to gain another position here at the beginning of the second lap. Roswell just ahead. Of course, we had a really good battle there with him in race number one. He's up into fifth already. He had a really good beginning. Had a really good start here. And, of course, we do have to look out for Nathan, who won the first race. We can't quite see him here, but he's in a green McLaren. And, uh, therefore, when you see him in the back of the shot, you know who he is. And he's certainly someone we have to look out for. And um, 
be wary of. In terms of the strategy, oh, actually, Porsche very wide there onto the gravel. We're going to gain another position. So two cars wide on this lap so far. Two overtakes for free. And it's always good to get free, free positions without having to use up your tyres or use up more of your effort. So you get in a couple of positions for free. Always good to see. Up the hill through the Schumacher S. Could we set up a move here? Up behind the Mercedes now. Into turn 10. We did one on the previous lap. Not quite going to go for it. You do have to be patient and not throw up a silly move and get yourself a silly penalty. Now, so penalties are on. And as we mentioned in race number one, there is no penalty line. So you do have to serve your penalties at your own accord. Um, the way that the game used to be. But um, you can't, So you can't go over the finish line and, and keep the penalty. You do have to serve the penalty before you finish the race. Uh, if you do get one. Uh, so I couldn't quite get the move done here on the Mercedes. He had the inside line for the chicane. And uh, we're going to have to be patient. It's a long race, half an hour. It's not like a, it's not like a daily race B sprint where it's all done in eight minutes. It's a fairly lengthy race. Uh, but we do have a very good opportunity now to go for this move into turn one. Probably the best overtaking opportunity on this lap. The easiest one to do. And we're nicely on the brakes. Hit our braking marker. And we hit the apex. We're on the inside. We get the position. That is as clean an overtake as you're ever likely to see. And we move up into fifth position. So good going so far. Sitting approximately three seconds off the lead at this point in time. Down to first gear to help the car rotate through here. Then back up into second. And of course you can drift really wide on the exit of turn four here. Absolutely abusing the white lines as, as if they didn't exist. And looking at the pack here. So good racing here. Uh, of course, on lap one, things are going to be are always going to be rather sketchy and, and close, and there may well be contact. But as you as you get uh, a little bit into the race, uh, the race beginning to spread out slightly, and it becomes a little bit more clean and less frantic, should we say? Up towards the final corner of lap number three, so I'm thinking of pitting around five or six lap, or at the end of lap five or six. So just a couple more laps left to go on this first stint. Just considering where we're going to come out, I think the, uh, the pit lane lost time approximately six seconds, so we'll drop six seconds further back into the pack. And then again, some people behind might pit as well, so it won't be so much of a problem. So a bit of a, a cork in the bottle here. And this is the thing with reverse grid racing, when you've got technically the slower people at the front and then the faster at the back at the start, that does mean that you get some corks in the bottle but look at this, we're going to go three abreast into turn five here and somehow make it work in fact, well actually, I'm pretty sure the car on the outside did not make that work and ended up off the circuit. But um, that looked like just very strong racing between the three of us. Unfortunately, there had to be a Shadow Realm victim. Down into the hairpin, up behind Roswell, we're looking for the position here, up into the podium. We're going to go for it. I mean, this is one of my favourite combinations in the game. Group 3 cars at the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. I feel strong at this track, at this circuit, at this track. And therefore, I always want to press and be aggressive and do the best I can. And um, up into fourth already at the uh, latter stages of lap four here. Russell going defensive, was that? Or looking for a move on Irith? Didn't quite come off. Into the slipstream now. Could we go for this move? into the chicane very close behind but we do need to ideally be somewhat alongside before the breaking point it goes defensive so it's not going to happen there and he overcooks it slightly we're going to go for the overtake around the outside he just leaves us the space and that is the brilliance of league racing there is respect shown and i wasn't bundled off the grass onto the grass unceremoniously so up into third place i was hoping that we might get some teamwork going here Especially as Nathan has just pitted, you might better see it on the left hand side. Um, but he goes for the return move, and I perhaps should have just blocked this to be honest. But um, didn't. We're going to work together. Let's not fight too much. It's a long race. So, okay, he's going to get the position back. And um, we're going to try and work together to get past Kirith up in front. And uh, what car is Kirith driving? I'm trying to see. The Aston Martin. Um, so I did consider Aston Martin as one of my possible choices for this, but I felt like the Aston Martin very good in a straight line, but it's just not, I don't feel as though it's good handling wise, it's a bit too stiff. The Lexus has always been a really good all-rounder, that's why I went for it. It's going to be, it's going to be good at all the different tracks that we're going to be visiting. 
over the course of the season. Coming up into the chicane, lap number five then, side by side. How is this one going to turn out? Not too well. We're just losing a lot of time here. So I decide to bail out into the pit lane and get a fresh set of rubber. So those guys can fight amongst themselves. I'm going to go into the pit lane, get some fresh tyres. Now the crucial question here is where are we going to come out? Where are we going to emerge back onto the circuit? The Lexus boys with a fine job in the pit lane. Thank you very much. So coming out here, Marky Boy followed us in. And we've actually got Nathan here in the green McLaren, as we mentioned earlier. Just come out ahead. So we've done one third of the race. 10 minutes have gone, 20 minutes remaining. And we've done our one pit stop so far. We're going to do one more in approximately five or six laps time. So this is a crucial lap. It's always going to be a crucial lap if we're going for the undercut. So uh, Ryan or Roswald in the blue Viper, who he was racing on the previous lap. Um, on the older tyres right now, I'm on fresh tyres, of course. So we've got to make that difference count on this out lap. And you can see the guys ahead who we were fighting only just down the road there at the hairpin. It just shows you how little time you lose uh, going into the pit lane. So it is worth going for two stops most of the time. Uh, especially at a track like this where the pit lane loss time is not too big. Only six seconds. Okay, so Roswell did go in there. Trevisio, who, who was the race leader, coming out of the pit lane, coming into turn one. Oh, there's a bit of a bump into into turn one. And we just about managed to survive. I, I was hoping to go, be able to go around the outside of Trev here in the red viper didn't quite happen so we're gonna to have to try and overtake him perhaps later on this lap or whenever we can so he just come out the pit lane he's gonna have fresh tires so he has a one lap tire advantage technically but he was maybe what three seconds ahead of us before the pit stops it just shows you how much of an advantage you get by uh, by <laughs> undercutting by pitting early and i think of the term then right coming up into the chicane Closing right up on the brakes. My goodness, look at that. Very, very close indeed. Uh, sitting in third at this point. So Kirith is in the lead and he's actually going for the one stop. Very brave strategy. And um, it can work. That strategy can work. So it's good to see people doing different things here. Most of us have gone for two stops. Kirith's going to do one stop. So it's brave, but it's different. And it's good to see someone trying something different. Into turn one. Probably the favoured overtaking place on the lap and we're gonna make it work just getting the track position on the inside to move ahead of trev and therefore up into second place and of course our next victim now will be kirith let's see how quickly we can gain on him and try to force a move and um he's, he's on old tires i mean this is lap eight he's on the eighth lap of those tires i'm on uh, just the third lap of these tires having pitted at the end of lap five uh, lap five so um so i've got a five lap tire advantage on him and that's pretty big when uh when, when the tire wear is times five it's pretty high down into the hairpin you see how much later you can break and that's the thing with with better tires you can break later you can turn better you can accelerate better because there's less wheel spin so pretty much every phase of the corner is better on better tires and look at this difference here. He's going to cover the inside. And I'm not totally sure why, because he's on a different strategy. He might as well not fight too much. But at the same time, he does want to slow he does want to slow down one-stop runners without slowing himself down too much. But we get through. This is a crucial point here because you see there Roswald and Nathan both behind him. I need to make sure I can gap here as quickly as possible. You see them fighting, trying to scramble past him if possible. They're fighting each other into the chicane. It looked like a lockup, in fact. I'm going to try and push away as quickly as I can here. I've got to be very diligent in trying to make this gap as big as possible at this point in time whilst they're stuck behind Kirith. I think he's going to bail into the pit lane here at the end of lap eight. Yes, he does. You see on the left-hand side of the screen. But he's going in for his one stop of the race. This is lap number nine, so half a lap later. And Roswald has a tyre advantage. He pitted a little bit later, so his tyres are a little bit fresher. We did manage to get away from him. He came out maybe three or four seconds behind, uh, courtesy of the undercut. But then you see here, by lap nine now, the fourth lap on these tyres, just beginning to drift a little bit wide on some of the corners. Not driving perfectly, not driving as well as I would have liked, but 
we're in the lead, so it could be worse. We can't complain too much. Now, Ross will look for this position. We're not going to give it to him too easily. Into turn 10, and then 11. So coming up is a very good overtake opportunity into, into the chicane. Uh, of course, with the toe on this back straight. And uh, it always lends itself to a good possibility into the chicane. Is he close enough? No, I wouldn't say so. so I'm going to take the normal racing line into this corner. Carrying the speed in. And you see there, the, the car just dropping off that kerb and squirming almost. They're going to get a poor exit. Force him narrow. But he's up the inside. I couldn't quite see where he was. And there he, there he was at the last minute. just appears. It goes up into the lead of the race. So I ideally needed to slow him down there. But the car just sort of didn't react nicely over that kerb for this cane. And unfortunately that unsettled the car. He just got underneath me into the final corner. So he goes up into the lead of the race. So a good little comeback here from Roswald. Uh, he was a couple of seconds down after the first set of pit stops. Courtesy of the undercut. But he's made his way back with that tyre advantage. So the main job now. Really just to try and stick on his tail. And make sure he doesn't make any progress. Um, try and get away from us. It's the main thing we have to try to make sure doesn't happen. And by the end of lap 10. You see here. Still on his tail. Now I decided. As, as there's 16 laps we do need. We need to do two stints of five, one stint of six. As we get a penalty, just cutting that corner a little bit too much, that is frustrating. That's going to really not help, <laughs> if, if, to put it bluntly. Now, I thought, as I'm in the slipstream here, I'm going to stay out for one more lap now and do my six lap stint now. I've got the help of the slipstream, so I might as well just do it. And then I'll have, uh, I'll have fresher tyres at the end of the race. And Nathan, I think, he's staying out as well he's just behind us and uh, you see at the end of the lap I wasn't able to keep up with him I'm going to serve my penalty now get it over and done with and um, go into the bit lane now at the end of lap one so uh, sorry at the end of lap 11 not lap one um, so that wasn't a good lap Roswell actually gapped us by about two seconds there courtesy of tyres and having to serve that penalty uh, so it's going to be tricky here we do have to make the most of this out lap coming up and hope that we can get back ahead of it. That's going to be the crucial moment. So away we go. Let's see where we come out. Into turn one. Who is that? That is Kirith on the left hand side. He's going to go deep into the corner. And I break a little bit too late. A tiny bit too late. And he gets the undercut. It was a tidy move. Capitalise on my mistake. I should have forced him to the outside. Rather than let him get the, in at the inside. So this is a bit of a problem. This outlap needs to be as quick as possible, but we're going to lose time here trying to fight. And through this corner, we're going to try and get the undercut. You see how much more of a drive we get out of that turn. And the unfortunate thing is that we get one second penalty just cutting the track. An unfortunate mistake, but I have made that mistake. And we have to live with it. But we do get past him. So now hopefully we can just try and push on here. And maximise the remainder of this lap. To make sure we can try hopefully to somehow get ahead of Roswald because he has just gone to the pit lane he's going to emerge from the pit lane and you can see he is already ahead of us he's maybe two seconds ahead of us there so that has not worked unfortunately and we still have this one second penalty left to serve it's not looking good at this point in time because Ryan in the lead there has fresher tyres he's just come out of the pit lane he doesn't have to serve a penalty and he's one and a half seconds ahead so he has all the cards in his favour at this point. And uh, by lap number 15, you can see that's pretty much the same scenario. As we come through the final corner, this is the penultimate lap. We're going on to the final lap now. And here's the, basically the, the situation. Nathan is behind us. You can see him there in the green McLaren. And we just need to make sure this final lap is a good lap. Because I have to serve this one second penalty. And if I, if I mess up this lap and then serve the penalty, there's a very good chance he could overtake us. So I need to make sure this lap, uh, this final lap is mistake free, ideally. We're not going to win the race. Uh, Ryan's done a really good job here of just managing the race, managing the strategy and typically actually pitting later and making the use of fresher tyres uh, later on. Whereas I went for the undercut and tried to gap early strategy, which usually does work to be fair. But uh, a couple of mistakes crept in a couple of inconsistencies and of course these penalties we have to contend with um, I think it would have been possible to win this race 
if not for those, for those mistakes. Definitely would have been possible, but um, sometimes you have to bring home a solid result, as we did in the first race. You know, we wasn't quite on the pace with the leader, but we still, still brought home a second, which is always good in a championship as well. You need to bring home consistent results. Uh, so th there you can see one second penalty left to serve. Uh, for reference, next week's races will be Spa. The Group 3 race will be Spa in the in the rain. And the Group 4 race will be Tokyo in the rain. So it's going to be a very wet affair. If that sounds uh, doesn't sound too dodgy. But it'll be very interesting, no doubt. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. because Well, you probably have because you're still here. Surfing the penalty there. And fortunately, he does get very close, as you can see. But it wasn't quite close enough. As long as I don't bottle this final corner, we are going to finish in second place. Once again, so uh, Ryan winning, really good result from him, really good race, very solid. And, you know, I could have won that one, but I'm not too disappointed, to be, go uh, to be honest. I was really happy with the racing today in these races. Uh, really good fun, really respectful, and I'm sure you'll say the same. I think it was just very, very good fun, very refreshing to have that type of racing, and I really enjoyed it. And I hope you did too. Let's take a look at the results and the standings. On the left is race one, on the right is race two. 20 points for a win, 18 for second, 15 for third. So I've picked up 18 points for each race, 36 in total. There's a one point for fasted lap in each race as well. And there are the standings then. Sitting in second with Nathan in the lead. Ryan there, after winning race two, sits in third. Only two points separate us. And then here's the team championship. I'm in team yellow. And we sit in second. So just one point off the lead. So very, very close indeed after round number one. So this should be very interesting going forward. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you're subbed if you want to see the remainder of the season. And do drop a like if you enjoyed the video. But in the meantime, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I shall catch you next time. Goodbye.